Hello and welcome. I'm Paolo Grassini and today we're doing a John Williams music draft. What the heck is that? Well, it's like a sports draft, but for music, for John Williams, we're gonna go and take turns. We're gonna pick our favorite top five John Williams scores. And joining me on the draft today are some fantastic people. They're like a soundtrack super friends of sorts. We have David from the YouTube channel, The Vinyl Score. Hey, how you doing? We have Mark from the YouTube channel, Popper and Vinyl. Hello. We have Garrett from at Soundtracks on Vinyl on Instagram. Oh. And we got Rachel, a soundtrack writer for lots of online platforms and the co-host of the Losers Club podcast, a podcast about Stephen King. Again, another legend. <laughs> Hi. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the John Williams Music Draft. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys took the offer to participate on this. Um, and I go, again, the goal is to have fun and celebrate John Williams. We all love John Williams. Before we start the draft, I really want to hear what's everyone's connection with John Williams. You know, do you do you have a wall in your apartment with a photo of him and light candles that worship him like I do or a casual fan? I don't know. Let's start with David. What's your relationship with John Williams? Well, I'm not at the shrine level, but you know, I'm I'm always willing to graduate to a shrine level for you'll get there. Somebody. I mean, yeah, there's a UPS package with a lot of materials to do your shrine that I might have enough sent to you. So who knows? I'm I'm thrilled. I'll, I'll set it up. He's just the composer of some of my early childhood movies, and the first moment I really remember his music specifically is I was homesick for like a little too long. And I remember one of the last days, my dad was like, hey, we're gonna watch a movie. And it was, we had a VHS copy of Star Wars and we put it on. And I just remember by the end, just freaking out. Like it was so good. And the music was like, wound me up so well. And by the time the Death Star blew up that I was just like, just hopping from couch to couch. And just, you know, I just, it just, lightsabering around the house and in the end of that it was like well maybe it's also time to go back to school so it was kind of a, a <laughs> those things happen yeah. at the same time right uh but that was really the first time and you know i watched all the star wars i watched all the indiana jones ones and that those are the ones that i really remember the first time i, I really understood or, or connected to how well music could could work in a, in a, in a movie like that Gareth, what is your relationship with John Williams? It's like it's the soundtrack to your childhood. If you were born in the 80s, mid to late 80s, early 90s, you know, and then look at the back catalog of music and realize that he had not only an influence in other soundtracks and other scores, but just how dominating he was and still is, but like how important those early scores were. Like to every movie that I watch, it's like, oh, you know, you make those kind of um, realizations. Oh, he did that score. I love that movie. The 80s, he was just the MVP. And that's the, the movies I grew up watching. He pretty much scored them all. Rachel, what is your relationship with John Williams? I knew John Williams before I knew it was John Williams, right? Like I grew up, I was also a kid of the 80s. So growing up with these movies, um, it's one of those things, yeah, you find out later and you're like, wait, that's the same guy? Like, wait, that's the same guy. That's wild. That's, it's just... Yeah, that stretch and just the the wealth of talent and his incredibly deep catalog is just mind blowing. And in my first John Williams memory, as a kid, I had a lot of trouble like getting up in the morning. Still, still true. But to wake me up, my dad would come in my room and sing or hum the Jaws theme song. And I had never seen Jaws, mind you. Like I'd never seen it, but I knew Jaws was a shark. And he would like come in my room and just be like, da -da, da -da, da -da. and like it would like scare me awake, which it sounds awful. And like my dad's a great guy, but like it's it's just that the power of such simple music. And I mean, I didn't see Jaws for a very long time because like I don't know, like I just was terrified of what I would find. And so I don't know, John Williams has always just been a part of my life. And then digging into his catalog as I get older is just so incredibly rewarding to like really go back and like, of course he's got the hits, which we're all going to talk about, but there's so much more. And I think that that's so incredible to really like see the scope and the scale of what this guy is capable of. Mark, what is your relationship with John Williams? 
So with him, he was the first composer that I sort of realized I liked soundtracks for. I used to take out the Lion King soundtrack from the library on my cassette. Uh, I got the Titanic soundtrack. Like I just kind of liked them and I never really thought about it. But then the very first CD I ever bought was this one here, which is John Williams conducts uh, the Star Wars trilogy. And um, it being your only CD, it, you know, I would just play it constantly. Uh, and then Phantom Menace was coming out and like that whole machine started too. And that just got me involved on a, on a whole other level. Like when I heard Duel of the Fates, I lost my mind. Uh, and then slowly just started getting everything John Williams related. And um, in, in my dorm room in college, I did have a John Williams like framed picture. People thought I was, that was my grandfather. Um, it's, I'm, I'm a fan. I, I do have to get a shrine, I think. I thought you were just going to say, he's actually my grandfather. <laughs> and that's my connection. If, I, yeah, yeah. I hope you have a cool one. Uncle Johnny. <laughs> he's a legend. He's a legend. And he has impacted so many people. I am lucky enough that I live in Los Angeles where there's a lot of film music concerts. And the John Williams of the, of the Hollywood Bowl is a testament to just this man's legacy and impact. Like once you hear those Star Wars songs and everyone just put up lightsabers. It's like, it's like a rock concert, but for film music, you know, and it's insane. It's insane. All right. I think we're really set up for this John Williams music draft. I think we're going to do, we're going to tackle the impossible now, but before we do, I do want to explore, explore sort of like the ground rules for the people watching. And there's a couple of things. There's a couple of rules, not a lot, but no greatest hits, no compilations. We're taking that out. We're only picking scores albums we are doing something that's called a snake order for that for those who don't know what a snake order is is basically we're gonna assign an order and we're gonna go one through five and then the fifth person gets to go again until we go back up to one and then one goes again and we're gonna do that for five rounds until everyone has like their top five last but not least this mic goes without saying once someone picks something it's out of the table you can you can't pick it that's a thing those are the only three rules. Guys, any, any questions, everyone? I'm ready. Let's do All it. Right. So I am going to sign the orders, and I have everyone's name here. And it's a transparent glass because this draft is full transparency. There's yeah. no... <laughs> so I'm going to pick one, and this person will go first. Oh, man, I did a really good job. I, I was so worried about security with this. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> we got Gareth. Gareth is the number one pick. He goes all first. Right, all right. All right. All the way in Australia. You can hear him celebrating. He is excited about that. It's a watershed moment for his franchise and the John Williams franchise. <laughs> Mark, number two. We got Mark is going number two. Mark okay, is going number two. Right. Doesn't right, feel David. rigged so far. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to go spot in the middle? David. David gets the middle. I can handle it. Oof, oof. You gotta, you gotta work for that draft if you wanna be on top. Middle is tough. Um, Rachel has number four. All right. And rightfully so, I get number five. All right. <laughs> I don't even have to open that. All right, let's go. So we got the lottery winner, Gareth. I made an amazing honor for you. You get to I'd go. I'd like to first. thank the Academy. Yeah. With the number one pick on the John Williams music draft, Garrett, what is your number one pick for favorite John Williams score? I'm so, I, I literally didn't think I was going to get number one and I'm so happy I did. I'm sorry to everyone else. And I'm sorry if I step on anyone's toe, toes with this one. It's Empire Strikes Back. Oh. <laughs> told you, I told you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. sorry. It's the sensible, That's like crossing it off. <laughs> it's the sensible choice. It's the I just story. I I tried I had a few yeah. like oh that gosh, I could have maybe like level pegging but <laughs> all right it's all right it's, it's like the subtle hint was right there um, oh it's gone I, apologies to everyone <laughs> and this is the last time I'm going to be invited to these things. I am curious though did everybody have that on their list that particular one yeah that that no, that was you, number one. No, I know I want a Star Wars of some kind, and I thought, well, that's my one that has the asteroid field, but also has just these few small pieces. Yeah. I can live with another one. I'll be okay. Well, but that's the best of the of the nine for me. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, David. I'm so sorry. Gary, okay. we, we have to ask you a really important question. We're all dying to know. Mm. Did you pick your favorite or what you think is the best? Are those two? It's the my same? favorite. It's your favorite. Okay. You just went it's for my, it. It's my, it's, I play right, it you're drafting like almost heart. every couple of days. Anything else to say about your triumphant number one pick? Compared to A New Hope, it expands on almost every theme and just improves them tenfold. We've all seen the documentaries on the scoring process for this one and on the on the special features of the DVDs or Blu-rays, what have you. And it's perfect for me. It's it's perfect. Oof. Mark, sorry, you are. Do you need a moment to gather yourself? They I'm absolutely your... not. I'm delighted. It was a great choice. It was in my list, but I'm happy that I got my number one and I'm not sad about taking it away from others because I want it. So... <laughs> All right. Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park. Yes. So Jurassic to answer Park. your question, this is both best and favorite. If you look at the soundtrack, so not only does it have some incredible themes, so like, like the Journey to the Island, like the Island theme and uh, Welcome to Jurassic Park, like those might be the greatest pieces of music ever. I can be in a coma and you can just play that soundtrack and I'll, I'll be delighted. So But it's not just that it has main themes. The rest of the music works so perfectly for the film as well. You get great action moments. You get the terror and suspense. And then every direction the movie needs to take you, the music elevates that. And um, not only do I have the soundtrack, I have a soundtrack pillow. So this is a, it's, it's like expanded motion <laughs> pictures. Wow. For, wow. Like, what? Breaking what? moment here. Fandom you know, to another level, Mark. You've, you've won the fandom draft. You know, regardless of owning the album, who wants a pillow? What is wrong with a, a soundtrack-specific pillow? So that's why I wanted it. It's my number one. I'll take that to the grave. <laughs> I think Just that clutching pillow. this pillow. That pillow is so funny. <laughs> We Mark always brings the visual aids. He always brings the records he talks about. He, ha he has outdone himself with a pillow for the soundtrack of his pick. This is amazing, Mark. David, you got the third pick. I'm okay with this. This is a fine spot. And I don't begrudge any of those first two picks. Uh, mine is definitely a, a high favorite. And this would be right behind Empire uh, for me. It's just a favorite. And that's Raiders of the Lost Ark. If that one had been off the table, I would have been in trouble emotionally. But this one is so much energy in this record. The themes on this are so big. Uh, I definitely have a Harrison Ford like self-actualization phase of my youth where I was like, well, if I end up as either Han Solo or Indiana Jones, I'll be okay, right? So I was like, I, I felt like a lot of uh, connection to, 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 to those movies a lot. And uh, so that's my number one. It swings big. It's got a lot of energy. Um, I, I don't know. I, that, it's got to be it for me. Rachel, you right. get the number four spot. Number I hope four. I hope you're doing good. I hope you didn't. Oh no, I I got I got plenty. I got plenty. I'm not surprised that any of those went fast, so it's okay. Um, that said, I am gonna pick something that I'm not sure if it's my favorite. You guys have already touched on some of my favorite, but I do think it's incredible. I think it's classic. I think it supports the film perfectly and elevates it and is just an iconic piece of film music and I do have a prop and so uh that would be Home Alone wow, um, home alone. <laughs> wow. My, my Home Alone paint can with all the movies in it <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah Home Alone is one of those things that where it just captures that that wonder that John Williams is so great yep perfect <laughs> That wonder that he's so like great at capturing. It's also mischievous, but just so heartfelt and the, the holiday aspect to, to it, of course, it's just, it's perfect and it's beautiful and it's a family classic. It's a film score classic. Not enough I can say about it. So that's, that's going to be my number one pick. Let's go. I think you're also, you've just got the number one pick for, for best prop. <laughs> I, thought yeah. 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 I thought the pillow was it. I thought the pillow was it, but now that's my number two. I yeah. should have said I have the Raiders novelization right next to me. I, oh. I, I didn't. I didn't yeah. bring that up, but that, that's the wow. best prop I got. That's a really great pick, Home Alone. Wow. All right, I'm I'm fifth, and boy, am I excited! I can't believe this made it to number five. I'm so excited. It's not my favorite, but it's one that I would have picked number one. And I'm gonna go, E.T. 
I'm picking ET as my number mm. five pick. Adventures on Earth could be like the best 12 minutes of film music in, in, in movie history. It's insane. John Williams at like Super Saiyan level 50. Like it's insane. He is firing all cylinders. The score takes a little bit to get there, but it's just, it's, it's such a high. It's just like the film. It mimics that sort of arc. It's just once you get to those highs, you're like the highest are the highest. I just think if I have to put one of his work in sort of like a, we can only send one in space. I think it might be E.T. I don't know. Well, Star Wars is poetic because of space, but oh, well, E.T. too. He's, I don't know. We'll send it to E.T. too. It makes sense. All right. So that was my first pick and I have a second one and oh boy, I was not ready, even though I made the rules, I was not ready with what would be my second pick. Okay. So Jurassic Park's out of the board. Well, this is tough because my favorite is still out there, but my favorite might not, might not be picked. I don't know. Mark, Mark scares me. It'll be a long time before it gets to me. I'm going to go with uh, Star Wars A New Hope. That'll be my other pick. Just that cannot last that long. Like I got to pick that. Yeah. Man, I'm the only lesson for me. Next time bring props. I don't have any props. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, 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 I do like Empire more. I would have picked it. But I am very glad to still add at the sixth overall pick pick star wars his score that might be the most well known across the world a monumental achievement in film music soundtracks and john williams career pick that a number six i'm so excited we're gonna go rachel back to you all right you know one thing i do love about john williams that i think similar in E.T. that I think he does really well that he doesn't get enough credit for is building suspense and the horror elements and kind of the darker side of, of John Williams. And I already talked to you about my personal connection, but I'm going to go with Jaws because I also think that with Jaws, especially when it came out 1975, there's a big shift in horror, as we know, like pretty soon we get Halloween and Friday the 13th. And, you know, those soundtracks both have something very much in common yeah. with Jaws and Psycho and Deep Red. But it's that using the music to define an undefined threat. There's so often that we don't see the threat. Like there's a lot of Jaws where we don't actually see the shark. We don't see Bruce. Obviously, everybody knows about the <laughs> The uh, complications related to that movie, but what is there is John Williams's music. And even as a kid, without even seeing the movie, I knew it was scary. And so I think that's incredibly powerful, especially for something that's just like a minor second interval, right? The fact that it can wield that much power, it's been replicated and duplicated a million times over in cinema. So yeah, I think that's why Jaws deserves some love. Someone could have picked that number one. And you would have been like, yeah, that that makes perfect sense. Like that's yeah. how that's how strong this his legacy is. That's insane. What it brings to the table in terms of how much it helps that film. Like you could make a solid argument that it's like his biggest contribution to a film. Rachel, fantastic pick, fantastic. I agree. Uh, I would also argue it's his most important score because what it mm -hmm. did for the rest of his career, and then just the choices of filmmakers to go with classical scores. I mean, that one, I, I think it's groundbreaking and it's a complete shift in, in direction. Mm. I think culturally too, it's, you know, there's like five themes in the world that people know without ever seeing the movie, right? Totally. There's like the good, bad, and the ugly. There's the Jaws theme. And like, it's, you know, it's used to parody danger. It's, you, it's just part of our culture. It's yeah. ingrained in it. And- I, I, it's a great choice for that reason, for sure. It's, it's like one of those words that people just start using as slang and then it becomes in the dictionary. Like it's the musical equivalent of that. It's like, oh, these two notes mean danger now. And it's yeah. accepted kind of thing. Uh, David, you get to go. I'm kind of nervous for this one, but I, I, I feel, I feel that with a couple of those off the table, now I feel like I'm going to go, I need something. I need something from the original Star Wars trilogy. So I, I'm going to take Return of the Jedi 
Um, because I feel, I just feel like I have the opportunity. I'm, I'm obligated to take something from that. I would have lived with a couple others, but I'm going to go with that. When I first saw that the kid, I thought it was a really rewarding third chapter. I find the emotional stuff uh, at the end to be really effective. But most importantly is that low, deep choral um, hum when the emperor's throne, when, when he's trying to bait him with, with about his sister. And I remember just feeling like, you know, the, it makes me mad that he's goading him with this. And the way that music is just trying to charge underneath. And when he's wailing on his dad, it's just the height of that trilogy for me emotionally. So uh, I feel really good about it. And it has to have the original Ewok uh, celebration yes. song. Yep, <laughs> no, I don't want it. No, you don't want that? Oh, I, I'm a big Ewok stand. So. Oh, I want the, no, no, no. I want the, the original, original celebration oh, okay. song. I just don't want that re that special edition. It, it, right. it warps it to a, a place I don't want to go. I also want the original uh, band from Jabba's Palace, mm. not the yes. weird version we got yeah. in 97 or whatever it was. Absolutely. You know what I, I think? I just, while we're talking about this original trilogy, because trilogy, we've mentioned them all, you guys are all vinyl guys, so I know you understand this, but like years ago, I like had set this low key goal for myself to collect every Star Wars record related to Star Wars ever. Like that was like my goal. And pretty soon I realized there's a lot like all of those like spinoffs of like, you know, Miko and like all these people covering like the disco versions and the odd, you know, other like symphonic, you know, covers and all that like just the power of those movies by themselves and how many different iterations that were kind of like you know I guess they were bootlegs I'm sure they weren't all properly licensed like that's insane like that just shows like how incredibly giant these movies were but and the music that itself like how incredibly influential that was that there's thousands of Star Wars records out there <laughs> well it's official Original Star Wars is gone. It's gone. It's all off the board. Mark, you got the so, next pick. So now that like all those top top tier ones are gone, now we're in, I think, some interesting territory mm -hmm. where I, I think there'll be still some top tiers some left. Surprises. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I know there is, there is, but there's some I want to say, but but I want to veer off in another direction now. So I'm gonna say catch me if you can. Oh uh, yeah. That was a yes. yes. oh. yeah. Good call. Uh, oh, I love that call. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's it's so different. It fits the film so perfectly. It gives it such like a, a charming presence to it. And even the way just it balances emotionally, it, it really kind of takes you on a journey. And towards the end where it's getting kind of melancholy, it, it, just, it finds a way to pick you up and leave you just delighted every time watch rewatching that movie. And, and just the jazz elements in it. It's just it's just so fun. And, and adds to that movie so much. So he goes back to being Johnny Williams for that score. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. That one hurt. I got to say, Mark, that one hurt. Um, Gareth, you have two picks straight, but let's start Whoa. with one. <sighs> All right. I was going to choose another one, but I think I'm going to leave that for someone else. I won't name them because I know it's going to come up. Um, I'm going with Superman. You can have it. <laughs> wow. Good. Superman. Um, yeah, that's. Oof. I mean, the main theme alone, the, the guy is the king of main themes. You know, there's that, there's that um, challenge to hum Star Wars, Indiana Jones and Superman, one after the other, and see if you can't get them mixed up um, because they're just all so iconic. Um, just the bum ba dum bum ba dum the, 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 everything about that intro that builds to becoming like a true superhero theme and one of the kind of long lasting superhero things. And he did this in six weeks, I believe. He wrote this score in six weeks because Jerry Goldsmith was originally tapped to write, but then with the movie getting pushed further and further back, they had to find someone else. And yeah, apparently he knocked this out in six weeks, um, which boggles the mind. Um, but he also created, you know, some amazing love themes again, which he's also just the master at. Stonking score, if I use that word. It's just, it's great. It's up there with the intro to Star Wars for me. It's just mm -hmm. pure joy and happiness and everything that Superman is supposed to represent. Oh, I've got to do another right. one. Yeah, you got another one, yeah. Oh, no. I think I'm going to go 
a little bit off track here because it's one that I didn't expect to enjoy m as much as I do. But for me, it's it again ties into my favorite movie of the series is um, Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter. Mm. Go on. He mixes it up completely from the first two scores and is kind of, I guess, growing up with the characters in the movie and that it just translates completely throughout the whole um, soundtrack. And it's it's really, really fun to listen to. And I didn't expect it to be because those, you know, I work on the show here in, in, in Australia and you think I'd be sick of anything to do with Harry Potter, but this is the one soundtrack which I will go back to. And it's, it's a really, really fun one for me. I don't have a lot of like history with, with Harry Potter. I'm a little too old and, and, but I think one of the best or one of the smartest things for his legacy is that he's done a few Harry Potter movies because in a whole nother other generation, like, you know, we're, we're a kid with some movies of his and I think that just gave him another like 30 year boost. Yeah. Any Gen C's watching this will be furious. It took us 11 <laughs> to get to a Harry Potter score, which we're all too they old. Could have, they could <laughs> yeah. have chosen one. It reveals a lot about the age group in this draft, which we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it at that. There's a podcast called The Art of the Score. These guys mm. are great. They did yeah. an episode on that and it was great. You just explore all the different styles there. You could argue it could be John Bullion's best, like modern, like up like 2000s beyond score. You could argue, but fantastic pick, Garrett. Mark, you have your pick. What's up next? All right. Uh, there's there's four I'm I'm juggling between, but I'm gonna go to the sequel territory again, uh, and I'm gonna go for the Last Crusade. Oh, uh, excellent so, choice. Solid. I mean, indie. All three of them have their own very unique uh you know styles to them uh all good in different ways that one again it, it it does what sequels do so well it builds upon the original material uh while creating its own identity there's so many unique tracks that um again just fit the scenes so perfectly and and just ha it has such a great kind of just overall feel to it this lightheartedness we just feel like we're along for the ride with uh, his dad. And it's just, it's just fun. Perfect I think sequel. it's one of, you, you mentioned something and I think it's one of his best with humor. He mm -hmm. really, the music and the humor. Right, that, right. Boom, 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 boom. It just always is working super well with his, him, his chemistry with Sean Connery. Uh, you know, the slamming that there's so many yeah. comedic oh, yeah, yeah. things yeah. that work well with that score. Yeah. That's a really, that one's really tops. And I do have it on vinyl. I don't want to make this I a know. big deal, but I know. I do. <laughs> did mark just stole your pick because you're up next was that a steal i would definitely pick it up if it was on the board because that that's a, a, a for the comedic reasons that I, I i i named i really think it does a lot of excellent work there but i also want to keep branching out i've got my indie i've got my star wars so i need oh. to kind of keep moving around because i'm worried that's about that i'm worried about that that's mm -hmm. important to me <laughs> This one's important to me. I don't think anyone will necessarily like fall out of their chair because it's off the board, but I really like it. Real 90s kind of brand of movie. And I was surprised that he worked with the director uh, in some ways. I don't know if they've worked together again, but my uh, third choice is going to be JFK. Mm. I would really like to see that on vinyl. Um, I, I would really call that, that's, a, that's one of my favorites. I don't think a lot of people are going to be like, you know, that's in their top 20 even, but that's one I really, really enjoy. And it's a little bit different style for him. Um, so that that's my number three. Well, I love it. <laughs> you took one. Um, if we're doing again, there's so many versions of draft we could do, but like tracks, the consp mm. uh, conspirators, yeah. or cons consp conspiracy. Uh, yeah, that track, which there's so many trends that John Williams did. And then that was the one about like, here is the mo suspenseful montage. And after that, that was like imitated in so many movies. So like, we need someone explaining a conspiracy, an investigation, something. You can always see that that rhythmic uh, pulse that he has in that in that track, in that cue. It always makes itself onto somewhere. I read somewhere. I probably use also use as a temp score a lot because it's just it works so perfect that it's so hard to like get out of that. Well, and, it, yeah. Oliver Stone has such a, especially in that movie, a rhythm. And that movie is constantly like doing these windups and having these sequences that are bang, 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 bang. And then it kind of lets the, lets the air out a little bit. 
And I, I just think his music's just pitch perfect with it. A little noirish, uh, adding to that, the unfolding of the mystery and the conspiracy as it goes. So th that's my number, number three. And I'm glad it's there as a personal choice. Great pick. Rachel. All right. I actually love this because my next pick, I think pairs really well with JFK for a lot of different reasons. One of those reasons is because it was also released in 1991, but is kind of the complete opposite. And that would be Hook. Yep. Um, Whoa. <laughs> you know, because Hook. Paulo in shambles. That's why I left it. I thought Paulo was going to take it. I know. I know. I, I, oh, no, you go. You go. This is yeah. what the draft is. Literally, yeah. I was like, it's going to make its way back to me. It's gonna no, no, amazing, amazing picks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here you see Williams just really, you know, similar to you know, Home Alone and Harry Potter, that magical fantasy that he's just so great at, but also that I don't know, that really like melancholy childlike wonder that he's able to capture, especially in this film, because that's such an integral part of the film. But then there's some really fun, like dark themes and kind of you know, almost campy, like for Hook himself and stuff. And it's just, it's, I don't know. There's some tender moments. There's some jazzy moments. There's some fantasy moments. I just, it's an incredible score. And it's wild to me, even still, that this movie like was kind of a flop because I, I think it's great. So I, I mean, so good. people our age love it. If you were a yeah. kid and you watch oh, yeah. Hook, you love it. You're like it's a flop from, for who, for who? Like only like adults who like, yeah, this ain't, it ain't for you. It's a great film. Take off the Julia Roberts scene. We'll forget about that. That like, it's like that's oh. so weird. We we don't <laughs> yeah, acknowledge that. Weird. I would say if you love themes, this score to my count has nineteen musical themes for character, Dang. which is insane. Okay. Rachel, I love it. Even though I was waiting for that, I <laughs> love it. All right, I get two picks. Need to change the game plan. Man, there's there's a really good ones on the board. I can't believe that's still there. I don't even know if I want to pick it though. Ooh, Gen C's are also screaming at me. I know it. There's another one on the board here. I think I'm going to do what I feel it's right in my heart. Mm. I'm going to go with AI. All right. Mm -hmm. AI is, AI has been a recent appreciation of mine. It was La La Land's record release, like three CD release of AI that really made me discover that score in such a great way. And I'm blanking, I'm blanking on the name of the track, but there's a specific track that is just like, I don't want to give spoilers in case you guys haven't seen this movie, but there's a pivotal moment in the film where a character sort of arrives at this sort of dreamlike world and has this realization. And John Williams writes, I mean, to say it's might be the most beautiful music John William had written, like that's a lot. There's a lot of beautiful music, um, but it might be there. He uses the voice instrument in such a like goth like dream like way that it's just like it's a go to me for like when I need to relax or mm -hmm. just not. I don't call it meditate. Just be like it. Just takes me somewhere. Like that music just transport me somewhere. And John Williams has written a lot of great sci-fi score, and that I feel like belongs with them. Oh boy, the second pick. There is a Hall of Famer still around. Do I do mm. that or do I go with? I'm gonna go with Sorcerer's Stone, Harry mm -hmm. Potter and Sorcerer's Stone. Um, this feels like a pure classic. Like this score, like Hedwig's theme is like one of those classic again. This is really evident talking about when you go and see him perform at the Hollywood Bowl, like among the themes and music that really makes people cheer and stand up is the Harry Potter music. Like it really resonates not just with me, but with a lot of people the same way. Like it is their Star Wars. Just fantastic. Well, we're going to go Rachel back to you. It's no mystery to anybody that I, I, I tend to like the darker things, the spookier things in life. And, you know, horror is my, horror is my jam and horror soundtracks. And 
I do feel like this, this next pick that I'm going to pick has a lot of elements to that again, is really an example of what John Williams can do. And it's a little bit more atmospheric and mysterious maybe than some of his other work. Uh, so that's why I'm going to go with close oh, encounters, yes. mm-hmm. which I can't believe is still on the board, but I'm going oh, to yeah. take it. Um, because yeah, this is just, I mean, an incredible movie, an incredible score, another iconic, you know, similar to Jaws, like a five note musical theme is like a pivotal part of the whole film, right? Music is at the heart of this and the communication and the way that he's able to create, yeah, just a feeling of, I don't know, not dread, but just unease almost and just not knowing what's going on. I also think it's a little bit more experimental in parts um, than a lot of his other kind of more thematic material. So yeah, that's why Close Encounters is always going to be in in my top five. Is it possible that a Spielberg Williams jam can be underrated? But I feel like mm, certain yeah. kind of, I feel like that one's kind of an underrated movie now in the midst of that five run or whatever. It just mm. feels like it's not as it's uh, a little, I feel like it's a little bit like more low key, you know? Yeah, it's it's kind yeah. of a slightly less, you know, like a slightly more of a slow burn i think than mm-hmm. some of those others so it takes you have to be in the right the right headspace i think i cannot believe that was still on the board to be honest <laughs> confession that might have been an oversight great i mean that's that just speaks to him right the fact that that <laughs> yes, is like exactly. so far down on the list like there's that many other incredible scores like that's insane <laughs> wasn't that like an actual hit on the billboard <laughs> chart <laughs> like when it was released like it like tracked I feel like I have well, that yeah. really made. Wouldn't surprise me. No, there's a yeah, yeah. Like it was like an actual yeah. com- commercial success, which is yeah. like, man, That's what a wild. time to be alive where a five no John Williams <laughs> thing becomes. Well, and it was kind of timing though too, because like you know, it, it, he was big, Spielberg's big, Star Wars is big. Star Wars, here's a here's a excuse me, here's a space movie, here's a movie about an alien. It's like, well, all these people and like I think it was pushed. That theme was pushed as a seven inch, um, as a single. David, um, your turn. I'm kind of sweaty picking this one. Like I'm getting kind of, kind of nervous about it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna swing a little bit more modern, uh, or at least the last you know 20 years. Uh, I'm gonna go with Saving Private Ryan. Uh, that's a that's a that's a it's a banger of a film. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Great dad um, pick. It, it has. <laughs> there's so much moments where there's not any music, right? And those are super important in that film. And I think, I don't know their relationship enough to say that he also made some great choices about when to be a part of that movie and when not to be. But when he is, uh, it just breaks my heart. He breaks my heart in this movie over and over and over again in in the middle of of a real heartbreaking story about war. And Saving Private Ryan is uh, going to be my choice for number four. That is one of those in his catalogs that I don't listen to a lot because on purpose because it's so moving yeah it sometimes it's just like man i'm just gonna be destroyed if i put this on it's a lovely sunday i don't want to cry you know um, <laughs> yeah. but it's but that's the thing it's so good and the concept it does that really good solid choice man mark all right i feel good about the rest of my list i have three choices and i'm pretty confident that nobody's gonna pick these for their bottom two Oh, so, you uh, jinx it you just no, jinx yeah, it. Gonna pick. i'm you good don't say that on a draft mark I'm you good. don't Uh, So my next pick is Minority Report. Um, Mm. I think this brought back some of that terror element that we got in Jaws, but in a almost like a more visceral way or or, or more surface way. But it's just like it has its moments of terror, of true suspense and mystery uh, and great action music that's not Mm. based on a march per se. So he's got a lot of great action stuff for some of his older or his 80s and 90s work. But this was just like just solid action music uh, which that was a bit different from williams so i really uh really enjoy that one when he's in the tub and the eyeballs and those yeah, little robots yeah. Yeah, absolutely gary we finally come back to you how are you doing it's been a while since you picked <laughs> there are so many x's on my list now that i'm scared that i'm gonna run out but i've, I've got a few backups and i've got and one of my picks has not yet been picked so i'm gonna lead with this one um for my number four uh, is Shinda's list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That was my it's, backup. That was on my list. list. Yeah. It's it's just it's a heartbreaking score, and I I left it alone for a long time um, for that reason, 
I watched the movie again a few years back and then, you know, you can, it's, that's, that's a film you can really only watch every 10, 20 years and you have to be in a very specific mindset to watch it and listen to it. And then I revisited when I got the, um, the John Williams compilation of him with the Wilhelmonica Orchestra when Sophie Mutter, I think I'm pronouncing horrible German here, uh, the, the violinist who played some of the, um, the themes from that. And it's a heartbreaking watch to watch her perform, let alone listen to the, to the music from that film. Um, but it's just, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely wonderful. I, I would echo that. And, and that's one of those ones that it never kind of occurs to me that like, you know, I'm in the mood to listen to, to Schindler's List, but, mm-hmm. but it's so good that sometimes I'll just make myself sit down because it is beautiful music. It's an important film. It needs to be heard, uh, even if it's not the kind of the bright and cheery one that you're always in the, the mood to listen to. Wow. That, that made it far. That was, I was debating whether to pick that one, but your last pick in the draft. Gareth, your last pick. Um, All right. I'll bookend it with another Star Wars, which, you know, might be controversial. Who knows? Um, in the same vein that one might pick Phantom Menace for Jewel of the Fates, I'm going to pick The Force Awakens solely for race theme. Yeah. Not solely for race theme, but a large portion because of race theme. Um, I think it would have been quite a challenge to come back to Star Wars again make it feel interesting and new um, the way he did for the prequels as much as I will never watch them again. Race theme really surprised me. Um, and there were a few other elements like uh, the, the First Order theme, able to create a new darkness from something that you know he could have written before. He could have touched upon elements from the original trilogy, but it felt oddly brand new and refreshing. And especially when we get the, the, full, the full version of, of Ray's theme on the record, it's wonderful. It's great. All right. Gareth has concluded right, that's his it. draft. The pressure's wow. off me. That's yeah, it. You did it. Fine list. Fine Mark, list. Now we Thank have all, all our last pick. Mark, this is your last pick. All right. Well, this will kind of roll off Gareth's choice uh, a little bit, but I will go with Phantom Menace for, for two important reasons. Well, for me personally, what it, it was the right place at the right time, how it expanded my world and Duel of the Fates just again, just blew my mind into another dimension um but then the rest of the score too i really enjoy it the underscore material that maybe doesn't take center stage in a scene a lot of that kind of flowed between a couple of movies i found and i just really liked that style that that he was going through at that time i liked that it didn't solely rely on the original trilogy for its moments it created new moments for for itself and and it sort of stood up on its own for all those reasons uh phantom menace coming in number five solid choice mark your draft has concluded david final pick of the draft here's one that i think is a little different it's his only animated movie i believe Mm. i'm probably that's probably incorrect now that i said it out loud but it's tin tin uh Mm. i think the adventures of tin tin is a really interesting score from him it has a totally kind of different little energy to it. It's a similar adventure story, uh, an animated adventure story that, 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 that feels, you know, so much in common with Indiana Jones and, and those kinds of films. I really love the Tintin one. So uh, that's going to be my last pick. And another kind of modern one, really, that's, I think that's like 2010. Yeah. Or something. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's kind of recent, but I, I'm going to go with Tintin. Rachel, your last pick up the draft. So one thing I love to do, and I'm sure that you guys understand this, is I love going back to see where composers kind of start, where they get their, I don't know, so you can check in and kind of see those early hallmarks of their style, like as it's developing and kind of see like, okay, this is, this makes sense. This makes sense is like kind of where they would start. So I'm going back in time a little bit. We've talked about the modern John Williams. I'm going to go back and going all the way back to 1972 for the Cowboys Mm -hmm. and I'm picking this one because I love the sense of fun that John Williams has here and you really get to see that he has that kind of playfulness that we see in so many of his later works and he also understands the genre he understands what the assignment and this is John Wayne (laughs) like Mm -hmm. this is classic genre fair and it's very much in line with like Morricone music and a lot of the other kind of, you know, classic John Wayne films. 
And I just think it's such an interesting thing in his career because you don't think John Williams and think Westerns very often, but he absolutely nails it and has a really, I don't know, it has a really rich sound and you can tell that he's having fun with it. So uh, that's, that's why it's my, my final pick. I got the last pick. Wow. Here it is. Final Here word. Comes. There is so much on the board. This is insane. We've picked 24, 24 scores of this man's career, and there's still some absolute Hall of Famers. Ooh. I have to follow my list. I did this for a reason. I'm going to pick with the top that's left still, but there is really so much. For my last pick, I am going to pick Memoirs of a Geisha. Oh. Um, mm. From the heart because love it. This is about the time I actually, like I mentioned before, discovered John Williams. Um, I did the whole Boston Pop Orchestra and then revisit the classic, the catalogs. This was the point where I was like, a new John Williams score is coming out finally, like a new one that I'm sort of like on the same boat as everyone enjoy. This came out and it it blew me away. Like, mm-hmm. and it's a score that features performances by the cellist and violinist are the principal thing. And they sort of have this conversation throughout the whole score. And of course, John Williams being the legend he is, he tasked two more legends to, to perform in this score, which is on the violin, Itzhak Perlman, his I mean, famous violinist. He worked with him in Schindler's List. And then for cello, he brings Jojo Ma. I mean, holy, there is so much talent in this score. I think it really stands out as a really great score that kind of has something like a different flavor than just the rest of uh, of his others. But we made it. We picked 25 John Williams scores. And if people watching this are thinking winner who won, well, we don't know. That's a thing. We're going to put up our picks on social media, on <laughs> the YouTube comments, on Instagram, on gigawatts. And you can chime in. But to be honest, we all win. We all win because we all get to enjoy John Williams' music. And this is, that was the point. Let me just recap. Garrett, with the first pick, he picked Empire Strikes Back. And then his other pick was Superman. And then he had Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm-hmm. Third pick. Fourth pick was Schindler's List. And then Force Awakens. It's a solid five, Garrett. Solid Very happy five. with that list. Very happy. Very happy. Yeah. Mark had the second pick, and he picked his first one was Jurassic Park. He then picked Catch Me If You Can, followed by Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, followed then by Minority Report, and he topped it off with Phantom Menace, the score he loves. David had the third pick. David started off with Raiders of the Lost Ark, a score that makes him really happy. He then moved on to Star Wars, Return of the Jedi was his second pick. Third pick, mixed it up, JFK. Fourth pick, he went Saved Private Ryan. And then his fifth pick was Tintin, The Adventures of Tintin. Rachel, you had the fourth pick. And you started off with Home Alone was your first pick. You then went on to Jaws. Your third pick was a blow to me, Hook. Pick Hook. Close Encounters, fourth pick. That's a good fourth pick, Rachel. And then you finish it off with the Cowboys. That's a really good five, Rachel. I started off with E.T. as my first pick. And then I picked Star Wars, A New Hope. I later, third pick, picked AI, Artificial Intelligence. And then picked up Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and then finished it with Memoirs of a Geisha. That's it. That's what everyone picked. And was there anything you're still surprised no one picked? Any shockers? And I actually thought this is where you were headed for a minute, Rachel, when you were talking mm-hmm. about a dark score, because the, the Temple of Doom sequence, it, yeah. gets, it gets real spooky for, for, for John Williams. Uh, and I also think Short Round's theme is really good. Mm. I did have some dark horse options that I could have thrown in there if things got, you know, real, (laughs) real down to the wire. And so those were, I had a towering Inferno. Mm -hmm. I really like this one because it seems very like reminiscent of kind of like 
a lot of Italian music of this kind, like that kind of seventies kind of funky mm. sort of stuff, which I always have fun listening to that. And then um, far and away, which I think is an interesting score for him you know that the whole Irish influence and working with Ron Howard and kind of the the period piece of that I really enjoy and then um for the kind of for the same reason uh Empire of the Sun yeah that was on my short list too Empire yeah the vocals in that are really interesting and the way that he works with those and everything so yeah those are on my short list yeah unless Gareth when you said Empire was that what you meant yeah (laughs) you wish well just yeah we all missed Empire my, like, my, yes, other, my other honorable the... mention my other honorable mention is i'm a big clint eastwood fan and uh i have been forever uh, and he has a movie about mountain climbing which is a oh, yeah. middling movie for sure but it's actually a john williams score as well and it's called the eiger sanction it's uh, a great I, cover yeah it's a great cover you know it's good on a saturday afternoon you know it's a passable mm-hmm. film there are some really strange writing choices with a couple of characters uh, th- that will baffle you. But from an adventure perspective, once it kind of gets going, it works very, very well on, on that level. So I was going to pick The Lost World next because kind of talking about, again, what he does with sequels is he didn't completely rely on the magic of, of the first movie. He created some new themes. He went in a darker direction. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he was even talking about, you know, the darker cinematography and, and mm-hmm. matching some of that. He was able to do something different with uh, a sequel, keep it fresh, but still incredible for the film. What I was debating on my last pick is, do I pick the Witches, Witches of Eastwood? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is... We talked about Williams having like different sounds and stages. And my favorite is like the magical musical moment that like makes you sort of like childlike wonder that he does. And sure, you have E.T., sure, you have the Star Wars and all that stuff. But in that same era are these like less famous movies that you can the score still have that same level of like magic and awe wonderness. And Witches of This Week falls in that category for sure. Space Camp is another one, a hidden gem, mm. I think, that just sounds amazing. I love his score for Sabrina, but I didn't, because that's like, I think, like a personal favorite. I think I would have lost the draft if I picked Sabrina, but love it. And The Terminal. Uh, I oh, love The Terminal yeah. score. Yes, of that course. Was still, um... You know, in prepping for this too, you know, I went to Google for a while and like just pulled them up. And then I was like, is this the day I'm going to listen to the soundtrack to, or the score to Stepmom? I'm like, <laughs> I guess maybe, you know. <laughs> it's what I have to do. Uh, yeah, I was like, well, I'm dial it up, you know, put on Stepmom. That's a wrap for the John Williams music draft. Everyone, this was really fun. I hope you had a lot of fun because this was really fun. You can follow David on the vinyl score on YouTube, his YouTube channel. Mark also has a YouTube channel, Popcorn and Vinyl. You can find... Mark's channel also on YouTube, uh, Gareth on Instagram, at Soundtracks on Vinyl, really great account. Got to follow that. And then Rachel, a co-host, podcast, The Losers Club, Stephen King podcast, another legend. And on Twitter, so you can keep up with her soundtrack writing. Everyone, thanks a lot. Great oh my gosh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. This was super so great. fun.